Most people never think about it, but one of the toughest materials in your house started off as mud. I'm serious. That coffee mug you're holding right now, the floor tiles under your feet, maybe even parts of your bathroom. All of them were once just lumps of clay scooped straight from the earth. And what's even crazier, that same material can survive temperatures that would make steel start to soften. At around a thousand degrees Fahrenheit, metal begins to lose its shape. But ceramics? They just sit there, calm, flawless, not even a crack. It's like the universe's way of saying, you can melt steel, but you can't mess with me. For something that feels so fragile, ceramics have been outsmarting fire for thousands of years. The ancient Chinese, Greeks, Persians, all of them knew how to tame clay and flame to make something that could last forever. And today, that same ancient recipe has evolved into one of the most advanced industrial processes in the world. So, where does the story actually begin? With dirt. Not just any dirt, special minerals buried a few meters beneath the surface. Clay, kaolin, feldspar, quartz. These are the secret ingredients that give ceramics their strength and color. Big excavators dig through layers of topsoil to reach the real stuff underneath. Dump trucks haul it all out, each one carrying a few tons of what basically looks like wet brown muck. And from there, the transformation begins. At the pre-processing area near the mine, giant crushers grind the chunks into smaller bits and powerful jets of water wash away every speck of sand, root, or stone. It's like giving the earth itself a deep clean. Some minerals, like kaolin, get extra attention. They're washed in circular tanks that spin out impurities like iron that could ruin the whiteness of the final product. Once clean, the clay gets air-dried and shipped to the factory, now ready to become something humans actually want to look at. Inside the factory, everything suddenly feels high-tech. Precision scales weigh out every mineral according to a formula that's been tested down to the gram. The goal is balance. Too much quartz, and it cracks. Too much clay, and it warps. Everything is mixed in huge tanks with water until it becomes a silky, uniform slurry. The perfect blend of liquid earth. Now, depending on what you're making, say, floor tiles versus vases, the next step changes. For tiles, that slurry is spray-dried into tiny granules that look like powdered sugar. For more sculpted pieces, it's squeezed through filter presses into soft plastic blocks that can be molded. This is where the real artistry begins. The blocks go into a machine called a pug mill. Imagine a massive kneader that works the clay over and over, pushing out every bubble of air and aligning the particles like muscles preparing for a workout. Because if there's one tiny air pocket left inside, it'll explode later in the kiln. Once the clay reaches the perfect consistency, it's time for shaping. In modern plants, that usually means extrusion. A massive screw slowly forces the clay through a metal die kind of like piping frosting through a nozzle. And out comes a continuous column of raw material. The shape depends on the die. Rectangular for bricks, circular for pipes, even intricate hollow designs for decorative tiles. The column moves forward, steady and hypnotic, before a thin wire slides through and slices it into perfect pieces. And even with all that machinery, humans are still essential. Operators constantly check every piece as it slides off the line. Too soft, and it deforms. Too dry, and it cracks. They adjust pressure, speed, and moisture in real time. It's a dance between clay and craftsmanship. For items like bowls and dishes, factories often use a method called jiggering. Picture a spinning plaster mold and a curved metal blade that gently presses the clay into shape. Within seconds, that lump of mud becomes a perfectly symmetrical bowl. But don't be fooled, the machine might spin fast, yet the art lies in the small details. The pressure of the blade, 
the temperature of the mold, even the humidity of the room can make or break the piece. For more complex shapes, vases, teapots, or those fancy jars you see in showrooms, there's another technique called slip casting. Instead of solid clay, it uses liquid clay, or slip. The slip is poured into a plaster mold that slowly absorbs the water, leaving behind a solid layer that thickens over time. Once it's strong enough, workers open the mold, and there it is, a fragile, ghostly version of the final product. And even in this age of automation, the traditional potter's wheel still holds its throne. Watching a skilled artisan shape clay by hand is mesmerizing. The way they center it, press it, pull it upward. All guided by muscle memory. Every curve is felt, not measured. It's one of the few places in modern manufacturing where human touch still beats robotics. But all this beauty is still soft, literally. At this point, every bowl, tile, or vase is damp and delicate. So, before anything meets the furnace, it has to dry. The pieces are placed on racks and moved into drying chambers where warm air, usually around 150 to 250 degrees Fahrenheit, circulates evenly. Too fast, and the surface cracks. Too slow, and production halts. Modern factories even use robotic arms to place and rotate pieces on continuous conveyors making sure each one dries uniformly. Once dry, the clay is finally ready to meet its greatest challenge, fire. The first firing, called the bisque firing, happens at a lower temperature, usually around 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit. The goal isn't to harden the piece completely, but to burn off leftover moisture and impurities. It's like giving the clay its skeleton. In massive tunnel kilns, Thousands of pieces glide through on conveyor belts, moving from preheating zones to soaking zones, then cooling zones. Each stage is precisely timed and temperature controlled. If even one section overheats, the entire batch could warp. Inside, sensors monitor everything. The air, the humidity, the chemical gases released from the clay. The result? Rows of pale, sturdy, matte-finished pieces, not yet shiny, but solid enough to handle. Now comes the fun part, decoration. Traditionally, this is where painters step in, armed with brushes and mineral pigments, to draw flowers, patterns, or intricate designs by hand. It's slow, meditative work, each stroke defining the piece's character. But when you're producing thousands of items daily, you need help. Modern factories use decal transfer printing or robotic sprayers. A soft rubber pad coated with ceramic ink presses designs onto plates and bowls in seconds. The machine ensures perfect alignment and coverage, even on curved surfaces. Workers still check everything manually because one wrinkle or extra dab of ink could ruin the finish. It's technology and artistry coexisting in perfect balance. Once decorated, each piece heads toward the glaze station. Glazing is what gives ceramics that iconic shine, that smooth, glassy surface that makes your coffee mug gleam under sunlight. The glaze is a mix of minerals ground into a fine, watery paste. As bowls or cups spin slowly on rotating holders, they're dipped into a glaze tank. The coating sticks instantly, just a thin layer barely visible. Then, the excess drips away, leaving a perfectly even finish. For larger items like tiles or sanitary ware, workers often do this manually, guiding the pieces into the tank and tilting them gently to prevent air bubbles or streaks. The glazed items are then left to dry again, their surfaces still dull and chalky, waiting for the final transformation. And that transformation comes in the next round of fire. A furnace so hot, it could melt copper. Inside, temperatures reach between 2,200 and 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. The glaze liquefies, fusing with the clay body, forming a skin of glass so strong and smooth it could last centuries. Inside those tunnel kilns, 
the heat moves like a living thing, rolling, pulsing, breathing through the chambers. The pieces glide slowly along conveyor belts, glowing faint orange as the glaze begins to melt. In that fiery chaos, something incredible happens. The surface turns from dull to glass-like, transparent and smooth. You can almost see it shimmer as the minerals fuse into a single, flawless shell. The clay beneath transforms too, losing its softness and becoming a hard, resonant body that can withstand boiling water or freezing air without cracking. This is where mud becomes magic, when earth meets fire and turns immortal. Now comes the inspection. A ritual every factory treats with almost religious precision. Under blinding lights, technicians scrutinize every plate, bowl, or tile for even the smallest imperfection. A single pinhole, a tiny bubble in the glaze, a hairline crack, and it's out. Machines assist, too. Ultrasonic scanners send sound waves through the ceramic walls, measuring thickness down to microscopic precision. Laser sensors sweep across the surface, creating a digital 3D model that's compared against the perfect blueprint. If a bowl is even a fraction of an inch off, robotic arms lift it off the line and send it for rework. This is quality control on a microscopic level, because when something looks this simple, smooth, white, flawless, it has to be perfect. Every ceramic object carries a whisper of that history. And maybe that's why we still find them comforting. They're timeless, unbreakable in spirit, and human at their core. We've learned to make fire dance just long enough to give shape to mud. And in doing so, we've created one of the most perfect materials ever made. So, the next time you sip from that mug or walk across a tiled floor, remember, what you're touching has survived temperatures that would melt steel, endured fire that would destroy almost anything else, and come out stronger for it. Ceramics aren't just objects. They're proof that some things, once born from flame, never really die. If you found that journey fascinating, drop a comment below and tell me what everyday object you think hides the most incredible story. And. If you're curious about more unseen worlds like this, the kind that turn mud, metal, and fire into the foundations of our lives, stick around. The world's full of stories like this one, quietly waiting to be rediscovered.